Erev Tov, Chabri Iman, Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. Guys, I've been wondering if Planet X is not on our doorsteps or something. Besides everybody acting kind of bizarre, here in the Czech Republic, the temperature has plummeted down to 51 degrees. We're talking about first week of August, supposed to be the hottest time of year. We went from nice hot summers or mild summers to hot summers to suddenly a plummet up to 51 degrees Fahrenheit right now outside my door here. What in the world happened? I had to put on a jacket this evening. It started dropping so rapidly. Just kind of weird. Anyway, it's getting even more weird, though, when it comes to what is going on with Russia and Ukraine. And I can tell you now, it's something that Bredlov, the former NATO commander, had dreamed of, and that was a war with Russia. Well, he might just get exactly what he's looking for at the rate it's going. But what really disappoints me is the fact that the Western media never bothers to report all the tanks that are being built up over there on the, on the, on the edge of the Donetsk region in Donbass. No one wants to report that when I show the world 40 tanks that were sent there to on the border ready to launch a preemptive strike on the self-proclaimed republic, uh, the new Russia there in eastern Ukraine. No one ever bothers to even pay attention to that. Oh, BBC, though, their own news media people began to follow my post as soon as I started speaking about Russian tanks moving to the border. Yeah, they caught that one, but they ignored the other ones. In fact, one BBC news reporter wrote about my own broadcast. He says, is this really happening? Is Russia moving tanks to the border? Yes, they are moving tanks to the border, but it's only a response as to what was already happening with Ukraine, provo provoking the whole situation from the beginning. I realize there is propaganda on both sides, guys. Believe me, I'm not here to be a Putin trumpet and sounding the trumpet for Putin. That's not really the issue. The point is, is to bring out the truth there, to bring out facts. It's not here to warmonger. It's not here to scare people. It's to try to bring and educate the public that maybe somebody that has some influence might be able to warn their political leaders in their area to say, hey, we don't want a war. We don't need war with Russia. We could have peace. But no, the neo-Nazi fascists that are running uh, the White House right now are certainly pu pulling the strings uh, out there in Ukraine. And they are pushing Petro Poroshenko to light the fuse. And Crimea, no doubt, is the fuse that is going to ignite a global war. That just concerns me to no end. Let me share with you, though. All right, yes, Russia is moving in some heavy artillery. Let's take a look right here, guys. This right here, what you're seeing, some of these are, are just trucks, box-type trucks. But in just a moment, as this guy goes around some of this, he's going to pass a crane here on your screen. But then he's going to pass some pretty heavy-duty do some uh, heavy duty, uh, uh, missile uh, uh I forget, they call them the 300P, I believe is what it is. It's actually used from the land to be able to strike uh, ocean-bound uh, sea ships. They're, they're used to take out, that's it right there, right there, guys. These are the 300s right here. These are designed to take out huge uh, fleets of ships out in the Baltic Sea. What are they moving up to the northern part of the border there? Well, they may be going towards the north, according to what this video here was showing, but I have a feeling maybe they're going over to the northwest there, just in case they're looking at doing a land assault but from sea. And there you have the armored personnel carriers as well, a whole row of those. And guys, believe me, let me tell you something. These rascals have got, they got human beings in these armored personnel carriers. Uh, so... Yes, Russia is moving troops as well. And I've got another video I'm going to share with you in just a moment on that. This here is the region. By the way, we're now looking at the Ukraine side. A little black line here on your map here. This line right here, Crimea is to the south, Ukraine here to the north. Here, Ukraine, though, has been also moving their own set of heavy forces in the region there. Let me just share with you what they are moving around. In this video footage captured here, we have uh, Ukraine taking up, these are uh, 122 millimeter rocket launchers. 
this, and by the way, you just saw the Ukraine flag as they passed by. These 122 millimeter rocket launchers are taken up there is what they're using on the people of Donetsk right now. It is uh, actually, uh, what was his name there? Russell, um, I forget Russell's last name. I will post Russell's uh, YouTube site. Uh, thanks to you guys that are listening, someone found out who Russell is, a calling text there in uh, eastern Ukraine. He is there to help. Uh, I'm assuming that he is descended of these people here, helping these people, bringing in humanitarian supplies. And yes, he is fighting on the field as well in the battle. He's got his own guns there, fighting against uh, the Ukrainian forces that are trying to overrun the eastern Ukrainians. And he's doing a great job, too, bringing how that the, east, uh, the, the western Ukraine's Kiev, Poroshenko's bunch there, are shelling civilian areas, attacking private homes. And they say they're not, but they are. And he's shown good evidence of 122 millimeter rounds coming in from Petro Poroshenko's side there, attacking innocent civilians. That's what you're seeing right here in this video here. Those are the trucks that launched these incredibly massive uh, shells in on civilian targets in eastern Ukraine. There's a flag right there for the Ukrainian army. And they are headed, as I mentioned to you before, to this region right here, uh, uh, Koron, I believe I think is how you pronounce that. They're coming down, getting closer to the border of Crimea. And don't forget, we reported this in the past, and I'll show you that again here in a few minutes. This was a plan that NATO had worked on that, that uh, Poroshenko and Turkey under Erdogan were going to take back Crimea. But suddenly there's a fallout with Russia and the United States. And now Erdogan is getting in with uh, President Putin. Maybe this is why this is all starting to escalate. Maybe Putin found out about those plans. Well, we know he already knows because it was Russian media and Ukraine media that broke the story of what they were really doing there. All right, let's move forward a little bit more here. Now, before I get going on the video, notice, you see this truck here? I actually got to see this myself uh, here in the Czech Republic. They used to have buses like that, and they still do. They actually still have them to where it's like a bus attached to an 18-wheeler. Well, that's what it is. That's soldiers inside of that bus-looking thing right there, all right? Those are human beings in there, Russian military soldiers. Yes, they're moving forward. Take a look, guys. See what's happening. Guess they're taking a fire truck to put out any fires that might come along, but here we go. That's a medic truck you see there with a Red Cross sign on the side of it. Okay. Again, another personnel carrier. Got humans on there. All right, looks like they got a medical team up there in the front. Now, that's a refueler, a tanker right there. All right, just supply trucks. We don't know what's in there, but it looks like they got medical going up. These guys, Russia's preparing for war, guys. This isn't a game. You know, they wanted a war, and it looks like Russia's about to give them one. Now, before the... Western media really gets a hold of this and butchers it. I want to remind the world what got this fuse started. Before we end up engulfed in some kind of world war, I hope it doesn't go there. I'm praying that Yeshua's words, Jesus' words of wars and rumors of wars. And even Jesus said, don't be troubled about it. He said, the end's not yet. Even though you're having the worst, it's still not, it's not, not the end as of yet. That's only the beginning of sorrows, okay? Now, watch right here. This is where it got started, all right? I released this about three weeks ago, if not longer. This is Ukraine tanks. Guys, I mean, this is what blew me away. Ukraine sending... There was about 40 tanks to the, over there. There's the flag. Take a look at it, Ukrainian flag. They're sending these tanks to the contact line on Donetsk. I even released for you guys. I released for you so you would know. I actually released for you where 
It's even being stated they're planning on doing an air war on the people of Donetsk and they're planning on using chemical weapons. Guys, it's getting very, very serious. All right? So here, Ukraine, tank after tank after tank. My gosh, one, two, three, four. And they keep coming from around there on the back side right there. That's four right there. When they turn that camera around, though, I'll move the video. I can't move the video far, but when they move the camera around, you see them everywhere, just everywhere. I mean, I even I tried to count them. I think I, I was able to count about 30 tanks, not counting armored personnel carriers in there. Where do you think these tanks come from? Come from NATO. Helping these guys out. Yeah, they're older models maybe, but they're still, they're helping them out. All right, just like Russell said, Russell said they don't do anything without NATO telling them what they're going to do. All right, now here in just a second, they're going to flip that camera around. And we, I think we should stay long enough. And they're, no, they're still coming, still coming. It's just like there's no end to it. This is what got all of this started, guys. This is what brought the whole, this is what brought Russia or what first ignited this, this is what caused Russia to start sending tanks into eastern Ukraine. We reported this, and we reported the fact that tanks were moving into eastern Ukraine. We saw it by rail car, then we saw those tanks on the streets of Donetsk. Okay, now, oh, media started picking it up, the ones there on the streets of uh, Donetsk, all right, they picked that one up. But nobody bothers to tell you about what Ukraine was doing the entire time. Wonder why. Was there a problem? Nobody wants you to know. Here comes the last tank. Watch it as it turns around, guys. I want you to watch it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freeze frame it so you guys can get a good look at this. All right? This is, this is just disgusting to me that Western media has ignored this video right here. Nobody. There it is. There it is, guys. And you can look here. Look at the flags. One, two, three, four. You can see four flags right there. All right. They don't even bother to tell you about that. We only seen one of the tanks go through with flags there. And somebody asked, well, what about OSCE? They didn't see this. OSCE was forbidden to go in there. That was actually written in the article, about, or not article, but on the uh, YouTube thing about this. But the OSCE did say there was major troop movement to the contact line from the Ukrainian side. Why? They're planning a war. They're getting all their ducks in a row. So yes, and they're also moving their rocket stuff right there. Now they're headed down towards Crimea. You have to remember, the war against Crimea to take Crimea back was already planned. And some people might say, well, you know, they want it, you know, that's their right. It belongs to Ukraine. Ukraine has a right to take it back. Well, you know, the true president of Ukraine was overthrown by a CIA-backed military coup. Okay? That's how he was overthrown. He was a democratically elected president. Vladimir Putin stay out, stayed out of it. The only time Vladimir Putin got involved in this conflict is when they started killing the Russian people. You have to remember, Russia had a legal right, they had a naval base in Crimea with, with, the, with, the, with being allowed to have up to 25,000 soldiers there. Russia was not going to allow a coup to turn around and cause him a problem in Crimea. Not to mention, they did a referendum. Of course, the West tries to tell us that, you know, that it was taken by force and that the referendum was all false, but according to the referendum, over 90% of the people voted to go with, crime, with, with Russia. So Crimea went in and became part of Russia. People are still able to come as tourists there. Even Ukrainians can come as tourists there. But now they've had to close the borders down. And as we know already, they just had a, a, uh, an attempted terrorist attack the other day uh, that Russia was able to foil. But there were two Russians that were killed, one military soldier, one uh, Russian police officer was, was killed during this uh, attempted terrorist attack. And the whole point is, is, of course, Ukraine is denying that they have no intentions to try to come in to do a military armed attack. Well, I'm going to show you that that's a, that's a lie, what he says. Now, I wish I could have found, I couldn't find it 
uh, even in my own videos, I couldn't find the video where I spoke about this on, but in the video I originally brought out, I show you the Ukrainian news source where Poroshenko talks about uh, taking back Crimea with the help of Erdogan from Turkey, and they would have the backing of higher powers. It's talking about the United States through NATO, all right? Now watch this here. Ukraine strengthens military forces at the border with Crimea. This came out two days ago. Spokesman for General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, uh, Vladislav uh, Selezinev, explained that this is the needed for a rapid and effective respond, responding to the situation that may arise in connection with the possible aggression actions of the Russian side. Earlier Monday, the head of the Crimea, Sergei uh, X, X, uh, Sinov, said that he does not believe in the possibility of an armed conflict on the peninsula. So they're hoping it's not going to happen. Now the point is though, I have watched the propaganda, both sides. I've been watching it now for days. And I see how Ukraine is blaming the uh, Eastern Ukrainians and, and the Eastern Ukraines, the self-republic of uh, the, the, the new Russia, as they call themselves, are blaming the Western Ukraine. And I, I see both sides going back and forth. But the damning thing is, is that I'm seeing the, even the, the, the Western media is intentionally lying about statistics to prove their own case. Again, let's show you more Russian military moving in. You can see it right here, armored personnel carriers. And we're not just talking about a couple of them, a lot of them. I've got more video, separate video from this one here. More and more military carriers are moving in. There's your Russian flag there for the military there. And that's about a dozen of them there that just passed by. All right? But again, and I got to keep bringing this out. This was on the Daily Vertical. War without end. What does this guy have to say here? Again, let's turn there, him up Brian loud. Brian Whitmore, host of the Power Vertical podcast, and this is Brian the Daily Whitmore. Vertical. Brian Whitmore. Everybody say well, hello to Brian. It turns out that July wasn't just the deadliest month in a year for Ukrainian soldiers. Nope. According to statistics but released to this Ukrainian week by the United citizens. Nations, it was also the deadliest month in a year for Ukrainian civilians as well. Yes, it was. Twelve Eight dead. civilians were killed and 65 were wounded in July, according to the UN. And June wasn't much better when 12 were killed and 57 wounded. So in case anybody hasn't noticed that yet, you can pretty much stick a fork in the Minsk ceasefire agreement Tell us, because Brian. it's done. Tell the us why, The Donbass is shaping up to be a war without end. A war without end. It's a war without end because Vladimir Putin's regime is because not Because Vladimir Putin. It does not give Russia a de facto veto oh my in God. Ukraine's future political direction. It's a okay, Mr. Putin, I'm sorry, but Brian says it's your fault. I don't know if you're going to be watching this broadcast or not, but Brian says it's your fault, Mr. Putin. And he's also telling us, Mr. Putin, that... 12 people died, according to the UN report, and 57 were injured, the highest Ukrainian civilians that have died in that month, not just the Ukrainian soldiers. Mr. Putin, I'm sure you would agree with that statistic as well. The only thing that he doesn't tell us, he blames you, but it is a record number of civilian casualties in eastern Ukraine. The picture, a building damaged by a shelling attack in eastern Ukraine, August 1st, 2016. That's by Getty Images on the article. Uh, the civilians are dying in eastern Ukraine not because of Russia, because of Ukraine soldiers. So maybe Mr. Russell is telling us the truth in what he's trying to let the world know. A true Texan that has gone there to try to help out his own people. You know, my father-in-law is a Ukrainian. You know, but the funny thing is my father-in-law is not Russian-Ukrainian. He is from the West. And he even realizes the propaganda and the lies that are being told. And he has a heart for those people in the East. So to my Eastern Ukrainian people that are listening, I live with a guy from the West side of Ukraine, but he sides with you because he knows that the West Ukrainians Maybe the people are being lied to. I, I, I just don't know. But anyway, you and report, he totally flubs it up. Mr. Brian, you flub it up. So, K 
Canada, though, and while this is all going on on August the 4th, is sending 200 troops to Ukraine to continue training Ukraine soldiers. Of course, the United States is there as well. And don't kid yourself. I've got the footage, and I'll bring it back out. We've done it in reports before. They have U.S. military forces fighting with the Ukraine soldiers, including the special forces. And, of course, it is said that, the, that Russia does the same, and Russia denies it. All right, I'm not here for propaganda. I'm going to tell you the truth. Yes, I know that Russia also has been fighting in this war in eastern Ukraine. Not the way that they're claiming in the media, though. But yes, Russia has sent forces in there to fight. And yes, Russian soldiers have died. I've seen the documentation for it. I've seen the grave sites in Russia for those Russian soldiers. So yes, Vladimir Putin, he can say it however he wants, but yes, he has sent in people. But you know what? I don't blame him. Because if he didn't, they would genocide those people there. And I need to bring back another... I'll tell you what, in Israeli News Live, I'm going to find the video on these things where you can see what really ignited this war. And I'll post on Israeli News Live Facebook page as well as I'll put it inside an article that I'm writing about this war on IsraeliNewsLive.org. Okay, so you can see for yourselves. All right, so let's take a look here. What do you know? Now a train load of military equipment headed to the front lines. This is in Crimea, by the way. I'll post the links for these on, on side the video here for you in the subject line. If you can speak uh, Russian, that's what he's telling you. He's telling you uh, this was actually coming from a place called Kirsch. I don't think I have... Uh, oh, well, let me put it this to you. You remember the train I showed you the other day that held the military equipment that, was, that was showed you it was coming from Russia down to uh, the, a place called Ferry? Ferry something. Uh, it's the little peninsula in Russia. Well, that's where this train load is coming from, that place, but now it's in Crimea. It's a little bit different type of equipment there, but you can see that Russia is definitely sending in the armament, getting ready for a war. Russia's not playing games. Well, let's see why Russia would want to prepare for a war in the first place. This happens to be coming from tbc.ru, a Russian news media website. So Russia has known this for a while. This is not new to Russia. All right, Ukraine and Turkey have agreed to work together to return Crimea. I shouldn't have put the word the in there. Sorry about that. This is translated from the Russian language to English. And I don't do the best job in the world. Anyway, March 10th, 2016, tvc.r, Russian News. I'll put the link so you can look at the article for yourself, but you'll need to be able to read Russian or you can translate it. Google Translate at least give you a general idea of what it really does say. But so you know what it says, this is a quote from Mr. Erdogan, President Erdogan, before suddenly the United States tried to do a coup in his country, and that may all be staged. And so let me just say this, if Mr. Putin, if you happen to be watching tonight our broadcast, uh, I know that's probably very slim and wishful thinking uh, to, to begin with, but if you are watching, I would still watch my back with Erdogan, you know, because one, he doesn't like Israel, so I am definitely not in favor of Erdogan. And I know you're trying to do it for business purposes, that's nice, but I wouldn't trust a guy any more further than I can throw him there. All right, so, Daredevil climbs up Trump Tower with suction cups. What an idiot. Anyway, I'm just being a little bit more frank about things tonight, guys. So, uh, Mr. Erdogan says, Turkey will always support the territorial integrity of Ukraine, including that of Crimea. Russia declares that it has come to Syria at the invitation of the government. I wonder at whose invitation he came to Ukraine. They think that because they are strong, they are right, says Erdogan. Now, let me correct... You, Mr. Erdogan, just in case you might be listening tonight, I know you listen to a lot of broadcasts, especially if people speak against you. You like to bring out all your attorneys to go against them. So, Mr. Erdogan, yes, you're referring to Syria when you said he was invited by the government, but you say that when it comes to Ukraine's government, oh, I wonder who he was invited by. Have you ever thought, perhaps, by the very president that he had to rescue from the beach 
before the neo-Nazi thugs backed by NATO killed the man? How did they know where he was at every moment? But Russia was able to come in there and rescue him. Perhaps that president there, the former president of Ukraine, was the guy that invited him to come there to at least save Crimea, if nothing else. I think he did have an invitation. Anyway, Mr. Pashinko responds, we will make joint efforts to bring back Crimea. And once uh, one of the most important manifestations of the deepening strategic partnership should be enhanced cooperation, coordination, and development of the contractual framework in the field of defense and security, Pashinko said in response to Mr. Erdogan's comment. Now, on the Ukrainian source, and if you can find my news report about this, I did a couple of them in a row. Mr. Poroshenko tells us they're in touch with basically NATO powers. They have their back. They know about the plans. So there has been a plan ever since at least March the 10th of 2016 of a takeover of Crimea. And Putin knows it, guys. Why do you think he's sending all these tanks there then? He knows the time has come. He doesn't want a war with the West. He has tried and tried and tried to tell media, the Western media about this. He doesn't want this war. But you know what? Everybody seems to ignore him. And the media doesn't want to really bring it out that Putin has been crying out to the media. He can't get the politicians to listen, so he's crying out to the media to say, look, talk to your leaders. He said, maybe somebody would change their mind. All right? Let me share with you yet another video to show you Russia is not playing games now. This here, again, it may, uh, and let me just say this, this may be the same personnel carriers that we saw, somebody added music to it, the guy that loaded the video, this may be the exact same personnel carriers that we saw in the evening broadcast there. It may have been somebody just caught it in another location. Again, this is in Crimea. This, these troop, this treatment is headed to the northern part of Crimea. So yes, Russia is not playing games, guys. But after all, as I've stated before, is it possible that Crimea is the fuse that ignites a third world war? I think about this in light of another article that is just now coming out that maybe you have not seen as of yet. U.S. approves 1.15 billion arms sale to Saudi Arabia. The U.S. State Department has approved the potential sale of more than 130 Abrams battle tanks, 20 armored recovery vehicles, and other military equipment worth $1.15 billion to Saudi Arabia. The U.S. Department of Defense has said on Tuesday. Looks like to me, the U.S. needing a little bit of an economic boost is selling some equipment to Saudi Arabia to help fight against Syria. Mr. Putin, you may find yourself in a war on every front you can possibly imagine. You know, for me, I don't want to see the loss of any life. I think every life matters. It doesn't matter to me if it's a Russian life, if it's an American life, and even a Muslim life. I know some people might not like that, but let me just tell you something. The Arabic people in the Middle East are human beings just as much as we are. I differ with them on their beliefs 100%. But they are human beings. And I've heard too many testimonies. Because the gospel can't get to them, Christ himself goes there anyway to take them the gospel. Every life matters, guys. I care probably more for Israel. And I'm not going to hide Israel's sins. We have got a lot of sins of our own people as well. But that's my people. I am Jewish by birth. And I have not forgot them in the news either, guys. Just right now, we're dealing with this major issue going on now. A lot of things happening in Israel. We're going to get right back into the news on Israel starting tomorrow and just kind of let this go where it will. But it's late hour. We specialize in covering the East European, Russian, Ukrainian conflict, Middle East conflict, things that relate and pertain to Israel. And believe me, this conflict here has every bit to do with Israel because it's not far from Israel either. 
if any of this boils up, if it ends up into a major war there, if Turkey gets involved in it, Crimea, NATO, whatever the case may be, Israel may also get involved in a major conflict. It may be a green light for Hamas. And I pray that Mr. Putin never makes that mistake of going to war with Russia or backing any country that would go to war with Russia or that would go to war with Israel, I should say. That is the apple of God's eye. Don't touch, don't touch his apple. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Make this video viral, guys. Make it viral. We need to get the word out. You sharing it everywhere you possibly can is what we need to do. And thank you for those of you that are supporting this work. We thank you for it. And those of you that want to come on board, our website's on the screen, israelinewslive.org. We need your help. God bless you and good night. The Donbass may be the most important one that we've done so far, may be the most important one that we ever do. This is about what is fascism. When I came to Donbass in 2014, I came here to help the good people of Donbass and to fight fascism because I understand what it is. I know history. I know what they've done. I know what they're trying to do now. I know what their plan is. I'm going to tell you too. On this spot, right here, from 1941 to 43, during the 700 days that the German Nazis occupied the city of Stalino, on this spot right here, over 25,000 innocent people were murdered here by the Nazis, by the fascists. Behind me is a monument to the victims of fascism that commemorates those victims and that is built to remind people always what fascism is. This is not the only place that the Nazis murdered people on an industrial scale in Donetsk. There's another place. It's called the 44 Mine. That mine, somewhere between 75,000 